I would like to go over the example in this chapter. The author is validating this form, meaning making sure that the values are entered for all of the form elements. He is also doing some calculations with the year of birth here. First, I would like to look at the source code. Here you see the form is being handled by a PHP script. And here we have the different form elements. I would like to point out that the author is using the HTML size attribute in order to determine the size of the text box. I would like to point out that that is better accomplished using CSS. The size attribute does not limit the number of characters. The max length attribute limits the number of characters. And when you're creating a form, you should always limit the number of characters that the user can enter so that they cannot type in malicious code. Now, I realize the author is using size equals four in the year text box because he wants you to determine that it is a valid four digit year. He is also using type equals text because he wants you to use the is numeric function. However, in reality, you would use type equals number because we have that ability now in HTML5. So when I click on the register button, I get this, these different error messages. Now, this is not a very intuitive or easy to understand message here. He's telling us to enter your email address. Well, where do you want me to enter my email address? Oh, I have to click the back button. So you want to make sure that you're giving good information to your user to make it easy for them to understand what you want them to do. I would also like to look at the view source of this page. So if I right click and go to view source, you notice that everything is strung across. And we typically don't write HTML that way. We write HTML vertical, not horizontal. So you always want to use your PHP escape characters to line up your code. This is a requirement in all of my assignments. So let's take a look at the PHP code that processes this form and gives the error messages. Notice that everything is in the body. All of your print statements are in the body. Now, I understand that you need to do it this way because content belongs in the body. And it is actually easier to do it this way and more straightforward. So it is fine at this point. However, I would like to show you later on a more efficient and better way so that we are not cluttering up the body section with our PHP code. To begin, the author sets this flag variable, OK equals true. This is a very common approach in programming. We want to determine when to do something. In this case, we don't want to echo back any values until we know those values are there. So we use this variable as a test. We have a separate if condition for every form element, and it tests for an error. So inside that if, if there is an error, we print out the error message, then we set OK to false. So as long as OK equals false, we will not be printing out any success messages or any values. Once we have determined that everything is OK, we have our final if, which actually prints out our results. So here we're testing for OK. Technically, you could code in OK equals true, but because it is not a string literal, it is a Boolean value of true or false, this will return true. So remember, at the beginning, we set is OK to true. And so we're looking to see. As long as is OK is true, we know that everything is fine and we can print out the confirmation message for the form. However, the minute is OK is false, it changes the value 
and all we will do is print out the error messages. So here we're checking the email, we're using the empty function, and if indeed it is empty, we give the user an error message, then we set the variable to false. Next, we check the password. Again, we're looking to see if it's empty or not. If it is, we give the error message, and we set our variable to false. Remember, some of these form elements could be filled in. The user might just have, just have missed one or two. Now we're, we're checking if both password boxes are the same. So here's our conditional, looking to see if they are not equal. If indeed they are not equal, we will print the error message and then set our variable. Remember, when we're, you're working with the if conditional, if the condition, which is the code inside the parentheses, returns true, then the code inside the curly braces will be executed. We have six separate if conditionals, and they're all looking for an error. If there is no error, nothing will happen, and is okay will stay true. When it comes to the year, the author is validating whether it's a true numeric value and also that the string length is four using the AND logical operator. He then has a nested if else. And what he's doing, he's calculating the age and making sure that you did not enter a year after 2016, which is when the book was written. Now we're validating the color, and this is a drop down. So here's the choices that they have. So they can choose between four different colors. And we're using an if else if to find the color. So if the color is red, we're setting a variable to primary. Else if the color is yellow, we set a variable to primary. Else if the color is green, we set a variable to secondary. Else if the color is blue, we set a variable to primary. He's only checking to see if it's a primary or secondary color. If it's none of the above, we have the final else, which will print an error message because they know that they did not make a selection and we set the variable to false. So finally, if there are no errors, we will execute the success registration information. So now I'm back to the form. I have filled out four of the form elements. I have two that I have not filled out yet. When I click register, I get two error messages. When I click the back button, notice that some of my data stays in the form. However, the passwords do not. This is built into the browser. So every time you go back, you have to type the password in again. I'm just letting you know. Now everything is filled in. I click the register. And here we have the success page. You have been successfully registered. You will turn 21. Your favorite color is a primary color. If I look at the source code, again, everything runs across the page. Not very professional. Now this is the form where the PHP code is rewritten. So if I look at the source, I have a different PHP file. Other than that, everything else is the same. However, this PHP file that processes this is more efficient. When I click the register button and nothing is filled in, I get a little bit of a different error message page. Number one, I'm telling the user to go back and fill in the following errors, and I'm explaining what the errors are. Now, I have hyperlinked this. I'm using JavaScript to do that, so I'm making it a little bit more user friendly. Now let's take a look at the source code. Look how nice my source code looks. Everything is stacked up very nicely vertically. This is how people typically write HTML code. They write it vertically. They don't write it horizontally. So this is how your view source should look. PHP does not generate it that way. When we write code, we put in hard carriage returns. We hit the enter key. That is why we use escape characters in PHP to format our code. 
Now I have filled in the form and I will click the register button and here's the results. They look very similar to the other result page. However, the view source looks a lot nicer. Nicely stacked up, easy to read HTML output. Let's take a look at the PHP page that's processing the second form. Here's my body. I have one line of code, one line of PHP, one variable. Look how clean that is in comparison to the other page where everything was in the body. All right, how did we do that? We did that by concatenating strings and storing them in a variable. Rather than using multiple echo statements, you can store the value in a variable and work with variables. That is more professional and that is typically what programmers do. The majority of the code, all the logic, is the same as what the author wrote, with a few exceptions. Here I'm starting out with my message variable. This is where we're telling them to please go back and fill out something. Notice my escape characters, slash n slash r, to format my source code. Here's my OK variable set to true. I have the same six if conditions, and I'm using the same functions. The only difference is, rather than echoing or printing out a statement which needs to be in the body, I am building a string. I am building a string or concatenating string values. We learned about this in the previous class. This is the concatenation operator, plus equal. So rather than using an echo or print for an error message, I am placing the error message in a variable. Okay, so dollar message dot equals. What I'm doing, I'm appending this message right here to the message up here. This was dollar MSG. Another thing I'm doing is I'm using my escape characters. I'm tabbing in to format my code, and I have my escape characters to create new lines. All right, so now we're checking the password. Again, I'm concatenating to this variable. I'm adding an error message to it. I'm doing the same thing with the password, adding the error message doing the same thing with the numbers. Essentially, I have replaced the print statements with $MSG.equals and a little bit more formatting. Finally, we have the if is okay. So we've already been building this concatenated string expression for the error messages. Once it is okay, we're starting a new value for $MSG. So we're starting all over. So here we have, you have successfully registered. Now we're concatenating the string to the previous string. Okay, we're building this string. We're adding this to it. And now we're adding this to it. So I have used one variable to give the error message and to give the success message.